So what is the format of Salatul Istisqa? It is like Eid prayer. The Imam, as described earlier, takes the people to an open area like Eid, same time as Eid, and he offers two rakahs with seven takbirs in the beginning, in the first rakah, and five takbirs in the second rakah. So he says, Allahu Akbar takbiratul ihram. He recites Dua al Siftah, Subhanakallah, Muhammad, Tabarak, Smukta, Jaduk, Wala, and Rayuk. And then he offers seven times in one school of thought and in another school of thought six times. And the most authentic opinion singled out as a number without adding to it takbiratul ihram. And in the second rak'ah, he does this five times, and we did not say four times because they did not add to it takbiratul movement, the movement from sujood to standing up. Otherwise, he would have said six. So he does seven times, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, after each time he places his hand in the second rak'ah, he does the same format, but five takbirs instead of seven, and he says Surah al ghashiyah and then he concludes his prayer, and then he gives one khutbah. Some schools of thought say that he gives two khutbah, exactly as in, as they had said in Eid prayer, that it is composed of two khutbahs, and this is not the most authentic opinion. The most authentic opinion is that it is only one single khutbah. As you remember, the Prophet did not والسلام, have his mimbar taking, taken out to the public. So it wasn't taken with him and hence he did not have a place to sit down. So he only delivered one khutbah. Some scholars say that the second khutbah was the khutbah of the women, but this was not part of the Eid. It was either something that was random or done once, or it was a separate way of addressing women because of their distance uh, from the musalla. Then he delivers a khutbah. And in this khutbah, he reminds the people to repent to Allah. He glorifies Allah Azza wa Jal. He expresses the need of the people and their begging to Allah Azza wa Jal to grant them the rain that they need to sustain their lives. He to ask Allah for forgiveness, to mend their ways and to fix their lifestyles. So it's a reminder and also to give people hope. Yes, we are begging Allah Azza wa Jal and we are seeking Allah's forgiveness and Allah's favors and blessing, but at the same time, we are optimistic and we believe that and you see someone going out with an umbrella because he's confident that Allah will make it rain. And at the end of the sermon, while making dua, it is sunnah if you are wearing an outer garment, a cloak, a hoodie, a jacket, something that is usually worn, not this thobe, something extra. Sometimes we wear it in black, sometimes it's in beige. And it's part of the sunnah to turn it upside down. So I take it off and I put the right shoulder on my, over my left and the left shoulder over my right. So I twist it and I wear it uh, upside down because the Prophet did this alayhi salatu wasalam, and he did this as a token of good omen. So he's doing this as to indicate that, oh Allah, we believe that you alone can change things and we're changing our outer garment accordingly, being optimistic that you will change the drought we're in and that it will rain. 
So this is a sunnah to do it only at the end of the khutbah as the imam does it. Is it for the imam and everybody else or only for him? No, it's for everybody else as well. Because the prophet would not do something and the companions just watch. They would de definitely and immediately uh, uh, follow suit as in the time when he prayed with his shoes on and he took it in the middle of the prayer because Jibreel, peace be upon him, told him that there was najasa on it. So it's the same way, the same thing, the same concept uh, uh, that the companions are raised to do and that is to follow whatever the Prophet does alayhi salatu wasalam.